everybody, this is Zach from Board with Friends, and today we're going to do a Let's Play. A Let's Play of a board game. Something new, right? Um, we're going to do a solo play of the Choose Your Own Adventure game uh, from Prospero Hall, House of Danger. Now, I've played through this once before, but the neat thing about this game is it's not legacy style. We can play through it multiple times, and you'll get different endings. Just like when you read a Choose Your Own Adventure book, if you remember those you get different endings depending on what you choose to do. Uh, we might die. We get to restart if we do. Um, there, there's all sorts of different ways to make this the gameplay continue, but we're going to learn the story as we go. So let's get right into it. So we're going to open up the book and start this first chapter. Chapter 1. The Grounds. It's a Tuesday morning in late June, and you wake up in a cold sweat. The nightmares came again last night. Even though you are aspiring detective and psychic investigator, you haven't been able to make sense of the haunting dreams you've had these past few weeks. In your dreams, you keep seeing the same spooky house. You're still shivering under the covers when you hear the phone ring downstairs in your basement. Where you have your combination office and research lab. You dash down to the lab to answer it. I need... I need... A weak voice says when you pick up the receiver. I need your help! You hear a loud click, and the phone goes dead. But you were prepared. While the caller was talking, you activated your high-speed telephone tracing device. It instantly displays the caller's number, 555-7259. You call back the number right away, but there's no answer. After consulting the tall stack of reverse phone books behind your desk, you are disappointed to learn the number is unlisted. You sense that the phone call is somehow related to your nightmares. Later, while at the Hedgebrook police station, to return a night scope you borrowed for a recent stakeout, you describe the mysterious phone call and your recurring dreams to your friends, to your friend Sergeant Morrison. That call does sound strange, he says. We'll look into it. And about that house in your dreams, a voice says from the hallway. I wonder if you're dreaming about the Marsden house out in the Hedgebrook Road. Detective Murphy sticks his mustached face into the room. Modern house, ornate gate? That sounds like the Marsden place, all right, says Sergeant Morrison. Strange things are reported to happen out there. Detective Murphy takes a puff on his pipe. That place is haunted, he says. I know it sounds unprofessional, but I've had a file on the Marsden house for years, and I'm sure of it. He waves a folder in front of your eyes and a phone number written on the front jumps out at you. It matches the one from your mysterious phone call. So, to call, so the call is related to your nightmares. Your psychic sense were right. Draw clue 26 to discover your goal. Alright, so we're going to go into the clue. Come on. Why do they have to put it at the bottom? <laughs> oh, well, very bottom. All right, clue 26. You guys stay there. Chapter 1 goal. Get inside the Marsden house. Place this card on our goal slot right there. Back at home, you grab a bottle of water and your trusty knife, preparing for a new investigation. Half an hour later, you stand before the Marsden residence, which appears to be exactly as it did in your nightmares. The house's futuristic look is strange contrast to the antiquated appearance of the stone wall and the wrought iron gate, which is locked shut and wrapped with steel chains. Even though the air is balmy, a chill travels down your spine. The gathering clouds on the horizon hint at a brewing summer thunderstorm. If you search the wall for a way in, go to story card 13. If you climb the gate, go to story card 7. Uh, I think I'm going to search the wall. Alright, so we're going to go to story card 13 to search the wall. Ah. 
Let's see what happens. I might die right now. That's always my way in the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Chapter 1. Story card 13. Moving along the mossy stone wall that surrounds the property, you come across a jagged opening created by fallen rocks. It's just big enough for you to squeeze through. Once on the other side of the wall, you find yourself standing in a cobblestone plaza, surrounded by marble and bronze figures. Most of the sculptures depict men gazing off into the distance, as if pondering the deep meaning of it all. But at the end of the cor edge of the courtyard is a monumental statue of a man atop a muscular steed. To your right, a stony path leads away from the statuary, and it's a picturesque garden where topiary bushes have been trimmed into whimsical shapes. Oh, how lovely. If you inspect the statue of the man on the horse, go to story card 4. If you walk toward the topiary bushes, go to story card 15. Well, that's beautiful craftsmanship, so how could I not go inspect that statue? So we're going to go to story card 4. Hopefully get to roll some dice or something. And story card four. The horseman is a dashing, bearded Civil War soldier, his bronze face stoic. He holds out a cavalry sword, a saber, toward the brooding sky. The sword's edge glints in the weak sunlight that penetrates the thickening clouds above. The sword looks almost new. At the base of the statue is a plaque that proclaims this is the memorial of Henry Marsden. The plaque reads, Henry Marsden, born 1839, died 1887, general in the Union Army during the Civil War, severely wounded at the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, appointed warden of Hedgebrook Prison in 1880. To your left is the entrance to a hedge maze. To your right is a gray, graying picket fence with a rickety wooden gate. You can see two stone angle statues, and beyond them, a cemetery. Okay, so I have an optional challenge here. Search the monument's base. Um, or I have the optional challenge of climbing the statue to examine the saber. And after the challenges, I make a story choice. So optional challenges I don't have to do, but oh, why wouldn't I want to do them, right? I don't know if I want to climb the base. I feel like I might die, but... Oh, well, it's a challenge, so I guess I can't die if I do it. Um, so do I want to win Clue 18 or Clue 2? Uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's try climbing the base. So we're going to do a challenge. Our first challenge, this is a climbing challenge. Um, so we have our danger meter here, which is currently at 3. I need to roll a 3 or higher. Um, with a d6 in order to uh, beat the challenge. So if I defeat the challenge, if I successfully climb the statue, I will get a clue. If I lose, I have to raise my danger meter by 2, uh, which would stay at 3, but that's not good. Um, actually, am I supposed to stay here? Oh no, that's where it goes back to. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Now I could use... Nope, that's to discard, lower my danger meter, and this only helps with a fighting challenge, so I can't use the knife. So really, it's a straight-up roll. And it's a five. So I beat the challenge, which was great. I'm going to take a clue. Let's see what I get. So clue two. I get the cavalry saber. All right, so I can use this to add plus two to my fighting. The saber comes loose in your hand. It's heavy and quite sharp. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item, move forward two spaces on the psychic scale, and finish story card four. Alright, so my pocket knife only adds plus one, but my saber will add plus two. Awesome. Alright, so now we have to decide if I enter the hedge maze, or go to story card twelve, or if I want to visit the cemetery. I've seen Harry Potter. I don't want to go to the hedge maze. But cemeteries are also pretty bad. Hmm. I feel like this is the wrong choice, but I'm going to go to the cemetery. So we're going to go to story card 21. Ah! You died. Huh. 
Uh, passing between a pair of stone angels, you enter an old family cemetery. There is a marble mausoleum at the center of the cemetery. A short set of stairs leads into its shadowy interior. Next to where you stand, a freshly dug grave yawns on the pale sunlight. It's unsettling to think of climbing into it, but you see something shiny embedded in the dirt walls. If you enter the mausoleum, go to story card 5. If you climb into the open grave, go to story card 16. Nothing about these choices make me want to do them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go in the grave. Let's find out what the shiny object is. I'm, I'm part cat. Alright, uh, story card 16 we want. Right, chapter one. I don't know why I keep reading that. <laughs> Without warning, the earthen walls begin to collapse around you, and before you can react, you are up to your waist in dirt. You writhe and twist, trying to escape, but it only causes more soil to cascade down. Soon it's up to your shoulders, then your neck, then your cheeks. You struggle to spit the soil out as it fills your mouth, but within moments you are fully buried. You can only see the dark earth in front of your eyes. Your hand closes around a metal disc. Perhaps a coin? You'll never know. Though as the soil fills your lungs and the world wavers and grows gray before finally turning black. The end. <laughs> Move back one space on the psychic scale and return to the previous card. Alright, well that's how dying works. <laughs> uh, so we're back to choosing between a grave and a mausoleum. And uh, I think I'll choose the mausoleum this time. <laughs> so we're going to go to story card five. Uh, I knew that would happen. The mausoleum interior feels musty and cool. Something is dripping from the ceiling and landing in the corner with a plink, which is odd given that it hasn't started raining yet. You also notice the mausoleum is bigger on the inside than the outside suggested. Oh, it's a TARDIS. A stone sarcophagus lies before you in the center of the chamber with the word Marsden carved into it. It appears that others have been in the mausoleum recently. There's a freshly dug pit to the side of the sarcophagus, and an elaborate tunnel has been dug into the ground beside the nearby wall. You can see that the tunnel is lined with cement. All right, so I can choose to search the sarcophagus, or I can remove the stone lid from the sarcophagus. I've seen way too many uh, horror movies to try to open that lid. Um, okay, and then I can go somewhere. Uh, let's try searching the sarcophagus. So we need to do a perception challenge, and my challenge meter is still three, even though I died earlier. But I don't have anything that adds to perception, so I need to beat a three or higher. And that's a six. Awesome. So I get to draw clue 23. I don't know if I get to do both challenges or not, but, you know, who knows. Clue 23. I got a large wooden dowel. Yay. You find a large wooden dowel. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item, move forward one space on the psychic scale, and finish story card five. Boom. I assume because it says finish the card, that means I don't get to do the other challenge. But So this will add to plus two to strength. All right, I'm getting some good items here. All right, so let's finish the card. If you climb into the pit, go to story card 16. If you travel through the tunnel, go to story card 28. Hmm. Well, I had really bad luck the last time I climbed into a hole, so I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, but let's... Eh, let's travel down the tunnel. Let's see what happens. Card 28. You creep through the darkness and find the cement wall end as a natural stone and earth begin. 
Occasional vents to the surface let in just barely enough light to see by. Ahead you glimpse the warm firelight of torches. You come to a fork in the tunnel, lit by the dancing flames. One tunnel descends deeper and is half filled with water. You could swim through it, but you can't see where the tunnel leads or how far it goes. Another tunnel looks partially caved in. Tiny clumps of earth periodically fall from the ceiling as you approach this tunnel, and several of the supports that hold the walls up have gaping cracks in them. <laughs> Great. Alright. If you dive into the water-filled tunnel, go to story card 22. If you explore the partially collapsed tunnel, go to story card 16. I've been buried alive once. Let's try drowning. 22. Mustering all the courage you can, you dive into the watery tunnel. This is just enough room. There is just enough room in the tunnel above the water for you to lift your head between strokes and take a breath. Eventually, the tunnel drops lower and lower until it's completely submerged underwater. You hold your breath, dive down, and look around. After about 30 feet, the tunnel opens up to a bigger body of water, a pond or pool, with sunlight beaming into it. You pop up for air. Well, I've come this far, you think. You're ready to, ch you're ready to chance it. You take a deep breath and dive back down. You get 10 feet in, 15 feet in, 20 feet in. Just as you're about to exit the underwater tunnel, something tugs on your legs. You can't tell if it's an animal or if it's a caught on an underwater vine. A required challenge. Fight to escape. Win. Draw clue 20. Raise danger meter by 4 and try again if I lose. Oh, great. All right. Let's, let's do some fighting stuff. And I'm going to use this cool cavalry saber. So... If I use an item, it's going to boost my whatever stat I want. In this case, it's going to give me plus two to fighting. Um, but if I roll a one, it's an automatic loss, and I lose the item. If I win, then I get to keep the item. Or if I lose but don't roll a one, I get to keep the item and try again. All right, so we want to get a three, right? Yes, because that is my danger meter. Nothing has raised my danger meter yet. Um, so let's see what happens. I get to add plus two to that, though. That's a five, so that is a success. Awesome. So I get to draw a clue 20. Well, I didn't drown. I guess that's a plus, right? All right. The thing, whatever it is, wraps more tightly around your leg. It's pulling you down. Another tendril, or tentacle, slides around your neck. You pry it off, and with the last of your strength, you give a powerful kick, and you're free. Just like that, the thing is gone. You emerge into a swimming pool with a lush pool house next to it. Lower danger meter by two, and go to story card 23. Well, I can't lower the danger meter anymore. That goes in the discard pile. <coughs> Excuse me. And I go to, what did it say? 23. 23. Which is sticking out right there. I made it into a pool. Alright. It's obvious that nobody has cleaned this pool in ages. The water is a murky green, and the surface is littered with leaves and branches. Ripples pulse outward from the center of the pool. Out of nowhere, you hear a calm... Uh, you hear a commotion. You look around and wonder if it's coming from inside the pool house nearby. Then you see movement on top of a gazebo in the distance. Someone, or something, is engaged in a struggle up there. Maybe they need your help. Then again, you if you offer assistance, you might end up needing help yourself. So I have the optional challenge to investigate the ripples in the pool. If I win, I lower my danger meter by 2 and draw clue 8. If I lose, I have to raise the danger meter by 2, and I may try again. After the challenge, make story choice below. Yep. Uh, well, I'm definitely going to look around. Um, my danger meter is pretty low. It doesn't make sense not to do it. Um, I don't have anything to add to perception, 
but I have to roll a three or higher. So let's see what happens. That's a two, so that is not going to be successful. So I have to raise my danger meter by two. One, two. And uh, I can push my luck and try again. Let's give it a shot. That's a four, so that is successful. Um, so by so now that I win, I get to lower the danger meter by two, so I get to go back down to one, two, and I get to draw a clue eight. Clue eight. Oh, you walk down the steps into the water and see that's what's making the waves. A strange whirring metal sphere, slightly bigger than a softball. You impulsively grab it. The sphere vibrates in your hand. There are two buttons on it. You press one. Nothing happens. You press the other button. The sphere continues to vibrate. Instinctively, you press both buttons on the same time. The sphere stops moving and begins to glow. Draw clue 21. This is getting exciting. Whirring metal sphere. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward three spaces on the psychic scale. We're at level two, folks. Awesome. So I'll keep you, even though you don't really do anything. And now we get to choose what we want to do. If we go to the pool house, go to story card 11. If you go straight to action at the gazebo, go to story card 9. So do I want to help somebody? Hmm. Move to the top. Then you see a movement at the top of the gazebo. Or I can go to the pool house. What kind of person do I want to be? Alright, let's go to the gazebo. Let's help out. This is probably a bad decision again. You sprint to the gazebo, practically pushed along by the winds that are picking up. A light sprinkling of rain spatters the ground as you run. You make it to the shelter of the structure, and the mayhem occurring above you on the roof increases intensity. Who is up there, and what are they doing, you wonder? You notice a driveway about 20 feet away. Ooh, a premonition. If you are level 2 or higher on the psychic scale, draw to clue 27. I am level 2. So I get to have a premonition. Let's see what that does. Um, that's a, is that a... Oh, it's a keyhole. Okay. And a light switch? With light coming through it. Don't know what that means, but we will find out. If you climb to the top of the gazebo, go to story card 10. If you run to the driveway, go to story card 30. Well, I already went this far to help somebody, so let's go to the top of the gazebo. Let's see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? I die in-game and respawn, right? 10. You stand on the gazebo's railing, steadying yourself by gripping an ornate post holding up the roof. The rumbling above sounds and feels frightening. What are you getting yourself into? Reluctant to barge into the middle of this situation, you raise yourself just enough to peek and discover that there is no one on the gazebo roof. The commotion is actually a large satellite dish, broken into three pieces. The big jagged fragments are still connected to the base by wires, and the violent wind are spinning them in a circle with great force. Flailing wildly like an angry octopus, the satellite dish almost hits you in the face. You might be able to grab a piece by zooming by. Uh, by a piece zooming by. Challenge, required challenge. Attempt to grab a piece of the satellite dish. If I win, I draw clue 22. If I lose, I draw clue 17. Alright, well, either way I get a clue, but I assume clue 17 is not a good one. 
Okay, so I have nothing to add to climbing, so it's a straight up roll again. Let's see what happens. That is a five. Fantastic. So I get to draw clue 22. Let's see here. You hold on to the top of the gazebo with one hand and time your lunge perfectly. You snag a chunk of the whirring satellite dish. The piece appears to be made by hand. An engraving on it reads, Planet of Crystals. Well, draw a clue seven. A satellite dish. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. You look at your you look to your left and see a path up to a driveway that might be the front of the house. You jump off the gazebo and run to check it. Keep this item. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. And go to story card 30. All right. We are moving right along. Oh, that's the end of the chapter. Chapter 1, Goal Achieved. You appear in a driveway, which leads you to the mansion's entrance. On the door is a plaque that reads Marsden, and a large crystal door knocker, which seems newer than everything else on the front of the building. You knock loudly, many times, but there is no answer. The storm is really picking up now. You try the doorknob and are surprised to find that the door is unlocked. You've been lucky enough so far, but you wonder if you've missed something before you enter the house. You look back. You can see a few clear paths. One leads towards the sta statuary, another to a small cemetery. Two more paths stretch out towards a watery ditch with the gate and the house's luxurious pool. You could go back and explore if you want. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later in the story. You can take a risk and go back to any you missed by following... by by following the choices below. Oh, all right, so I can go back and get things if I wanted to, but where's the fun in that? Otherwise, you may advance to chapter two, keep all inventory items. Well, I think I'm gonna keep everything I got here. I'm not gonna go back, even though it's probably a good idea to find more stuff, because there's plenty in that clue deck. Uh, but we're gonna end it here. That is the first chapter of House of Danger. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have played this game before, Try not to spoil it in comments below. If you haven't and you're interested, we're going to keep playing the chapters periodically and do more Let's Plays. And then if we had fun with this, uh, we'll see what other solo games we can play. Uh, but for now, do like the cool kids do, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.